Welcome to Talking Technique No Trouble. This is Ari, episode 45. A while ago in the Talking Technique series, I did an episode on how to liven up a groove using dead notes. And in that episode, I played a walking bass line and afterwards I got an email from Lionel saying, could you talk a little bit more about these little burps that you put into uh, that walking bass line? I'll be happy to do that. And I love that expression, burps. So Lionel, I'm gonna totally go with that. Um, this is gonna be a two part series. Today, the burps will be uh, eighth notes. I'll show you different ways uh, how to do them with the left hand, with the right hand as dead notes on the same string, as dead notes on different strings and as life notes, if you will, non dead notes. And I have a few ways um, how I like to practice them. And uh, in the next episode, I will show you how to incorporate triplets in a nice way and how to practice that. Let's talk about, in very general terms, about the responsibilities that you have when you are playing a walking bass line. You have two main responsibilities. One is of harmonic nature and one is of rhythmic nature. Your harmonic responsibility is to outline the chords. To do that in such a fashion that the melody instruments, the soloists, and the harmony instruments can play over that. So you're creating a weave. Your rhythmic responsibility, very often, not always, but very often, is to play in four or to play four beats per measure. Of course, we can do more than just four. That's what this episode is about. But um, uh, it, it, the pulse needs to be four beats per bar, so quarter notes. And the way we make those quarter notes feel is a very crucial and important ingredient to make the song swing and feel good. I have a PDF for you. Please download it right here in the No Treble post and follow along. The chord progression that I'm using is a frequently used one in, chord, in jazz. It's a two, five, one, six in the key of B flat. Two, five, one, six to an altered version of the sixth chord here. But you can just make that a regular G7 as well if you like. I want to start out playing this bass line, um, the example, and then I'll go into something else. Um, legato, meaning no spaces in between the notes. And we're getting to the burps, I promise. Um, the goal here would be to make the notes sound as even as possible, maybe a slight emphasis on the two and four. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes I will even play the notes with one finger. I usually like to alternate, but sometimes with these kind of slow tempos where it's just quarter notes, I might just play one one and the same finger because it gives me more control over the evenness. But uh, you can slightly emphasis two and four if you if you like. So here we go. One, two, um, this is tempo 70, so it's dialed in as 70 and the metronome says 140, I put the click on two and four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, that's legato. Now a variation of that, and I think a first step before we even want to, want to get to the burps, is to phrase this in a way that jumps on the swing feel of the drummer. What do I mean by that? A swing feel is ternary. So it's a triplet subdivision, not a binary subdivision. Everything I do, lifting a finger, stopping a note, playing a dead note, wants to happen according to the grid that the drummer feeds me in terms of their particular feel. So here I'm going to bring out the swing feel without actually playing a dead note or a skip yet. <laughs> So what I did here is I cut the note off one and a. Uh. The a, uh, I'm cutting the note off. It's a subtle difference. Legato. And then with the swing feeling, it's really hard not to put the burps in because I'm so used to doing it. It's the first step to get the feel where that burp should be, okay? And 
Listen to this in contrast. This is binary. I'm going to put the click on one and three so we're sure we're hearing that. This is binary. Versus. Okay, so I hope you hear the difference. Um, in the first example, I was cutting it off at the one and, and I was pretending that each quarter note has one and two and three and four and as a subdivision, versus the swing feel where it's one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a, one and a, right? Okay, that's step one to get the feel right. Okay, now let's burp. Instead of just lifting that note at that very particular point in time, I can play an actual dead note. And there are several ways how I can do that. When you look at the sheet, you'll see the word comprehensive practice. So I like to practice everything I practice in a comprehensive way. So I'm going to do it on every single beat. And then I'm going to be doing it on every single beat within the bar. Okay, so what I oftentimes see happening with uh, students is these embellishments become crutches. You don't know how to get to a certain chord change and then you put in a burp and you put in a little, yeah, I meant to do that, right? But we want to make sure these embellishments are there for musical reasons and not because you want to mask a little rhythmic insecurity or you're not sure about the changes or something like that. Um, so what ways to burp are there? I have a little list on page two of a few that I recommend you practice. The right hand on the same string unmuted. So I'm basically playing a skip on every single note. That's the um, comprehensive practice there in measure five on the sheet. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so I'm playing a skip on every single beat and I'm just doing that to practice and I am not muting anything. Now let's try muting. For muting we have several options. One option would be to mute the note on the string I'm playing it on. Now listen to what kind of effect this has. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Sounds a bit on the choppy side, doesn't it? Sounds way more swingy if you don't mute the note on the string that you're playing it on, but you mute the note on the string below and you mute that string. Now you can do that. That sounds way jazzier. Now you can do that either by raking. Or you can do that by not raking. So here it is without raking. One, two, three, four. And here it is with raking. One, two, three, four. And I'm aware I have this B string here, so if you play on a five, on a four string, then you would, instead of doing this, you would do it on the same string. But again, keep in mind, we're doing an exercise here, and we're doing it on every single beat. Okay, now I'm going to be switching it up according to the beat of the bar. Next exercise, and I think this is really where it's at. You want to burp on beat one with the nice jazzy burps while using the string below. If you can, if you're running out of strings, all is good. One and two, three, four. One and two, three, four. And then you switch to beat two. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four, and so forth. Okay, let's try it. One, two, three, four. One, two, idea on beat two. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three. And the same idea on beat three. One, two, three, and four.
and on beat four. One, two, three, four, and on. So you can practice those different ways. Now I got one more kind of burp for you. And um, that's a cool one. It's with the left hand. Now we're trying to sound like upright players oftentimes when we walk. And uh, upright bass players do these figures a lot. They also do a lot of drops and triplets. And by the way, a great book. It's unfortunately out of print, but you can get it on Amazon. Um, usually used or it's out there. Uh, but Mike Richmond, Modern Walking Bass Technique, has some great rhythmic approaches to playing walking bass. And um, it's come, we, we're trying to sound like an upright. So what upright bass players often do is they make these little burps where they pull with their left hand. And you can either pull into a note and I like that to be the next note I play, not necessarily, but for example, in the beginning of the line, or pull into the open string if that fits. Now that's technically not really a dead note, but it's definitely a lighter sounding note, and it sounds really cool when you combine them. Because now I have a big arsenal of sounds. I have, you know, all my different ways, mute on the same string, mute below, rake, um, and now even bringing in the left hand. Um, I would also practice this systematically. However, this works on some notes. It works better than others, depending on where you are on the string. Sometimes you may not be able to pull it off excuse my pun, because you have no note to pull off if there's, for example, if it's an open string, well then just jump in with your right hand, okay? So let's see uh, if we can execute this same exercise uh, again on every single beat with the left hand. Left hand burps only on beat one. One, two, three, four. <laughs> that sound when you go and then you pluck that same note. Uh, beat three. One, two, three, and four. So there I couldn't do it because I was on beat three. I was on the D. And um, no matter. So I'll just fill in with my right hand. And beat four. One, two, three, four. And So I started this one up here to avoid the open D and the open G string on this one so I could pull off with my left. And then when you practice that for a while, you put them all together. And that's when it gets really interesting because then it just comes out as it wants to creatively. And I put two possible lines uh, down there for you. One, two, three, four. <laughs> entire measure of burps. Don't overdo it though because it has to be used with taste. Burps in a walking bass. Thanks again for the question Lionel. If you enjoy comprehensive systematic teaching like this please check out arispaceblock.com. I have articles, videos, uh, free bass educational content Q&As coming out every week. Uh, so if you can subscribe there for free. And also arianacap.com got a redesign and has a lot of educational resources now as well. I want to reiterate my recommendation for the Mike Richmond book on walking bass. Uh, it's a bit hard to find, as I said, but I found one resource on Amazon and I placed that on my blog, arispaceblog.com. If you navigate to learn in the menu and then go to resources, scroll to the book section and there is one current resource on Amazon so you can find it there. My book is called Music Theory for the Bass Player and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.